Shackles, no more chains, no more bondage. I am free. 
thank you for waking us up this morning. Thank you for allowing us to have health, life, and strength. Thank you for removing any impurities from our bodies. Bless the healthcare workers, the fire department, the military, our government, those who help with leadership over others. Bless those who help the homeless, help those teachers to they're able to teach our students and teach us with their whole hearts and mind, teach us with our best interests in mind, teach the students what they need to learn so that they're able to be successful. Good morning, East First Hill family and friends. Welcome. If you don't know me, my name is Domari. I'm from East Friendship Baptist Church. I'm an awesome grandson of Andrea Casey. It's an honor to welcome our family, visitors, and friends to our work of virtual service. I'm also honored to be celebrating Black History Month. It is so important to teach us about Black history and our culture. There is so much left out of our school studies that Black history could be studied not just for a week, a month, but all year long. I want to be aware of my history and culture so I can contribute to positive future changes. Once again, we are glad you are joining us today for another awesome worship experience. You could have tuned into any online services, but we are grateful that you chose to join us. East Friendship Live on Facebook and YouTube. If you are a member of East Friendship, what's up? If you are worshiping with us for the first time, we send you a very special welcome and hope to see you again. I know God is gonna bless our times together. Before we get into our worship service today, this will be a good time to wake up your friends and followers and to invite them to come check us out. Let them know that we have great worship, praise, dynamic preaching and teaching from Pastor Matt. Now you know East Friendship is an active church, so let's clap our hands stomp our feet, and sing really loud so our neighbors can hear us. Talk back to us. Let's see some. That's what's up, East Friendship. is live and lit. Family, we want to thank you for your faithful financial support. It is through your gifts that we can continue the work of our Christ and to broadcast this worship experience. Please continue to give through any of our four given options at any time. We've even made it easier for you. You see the QR code on your screen. Just open the camera app on your phone, Point your phone at the QR to scan it, and finally, tap the pop-up banner. It will take you to our given page. Try it now. Finally, our desire here at East Friendship is that you know God, find freedom, discover your purpose, and make a difference. East Friendship, let's go to church. Praise the Lord, everybody, and let us exalt his name together. At East Friendship, we invite you to our community to get to know God, find freedom, and discover your purpose, and make a difference. Here are ways you can continue to grow with us in this season and get connected to the East Friendship family. Hey, East Friendship family and friends. Today, Sunday, February 20th, the winter spring small group season begins. And we want to make sure that you are connected to our church by participating in a small group of your choosing. We have a catalog full of exciting groups, but today I'd like to highlight three of the newest groups that are starting this season. First up is Always Protected, Always Connected 365. Now, this group gives you access to affordable legal protection and protections against identity theft. You will have access to court representation for speeding tickets, 24 seven access to a law firm, advice on legal matters, name changes, will preparation, and so much more. Hey, the first class for this group starts this Saturday. You can find out more about it in your catalog. Our next highlighted new group is Gifted Hands. Do you have a little free time on your hands? Would you like to learn the basics of crocheting? You can pick up this great new hobby uh, as Sayana Talbert shares her love for crocheting. She's honed her skills by making hats, scarves, and other items, and all while garnering a growing following on Facebook. Hey, it's in the catalog. Check it out. And our third group is called Reclaim Our Vote. Now, it's February, which is Black History Month, and I'm reminded that the Voting Rights Act of 1965 was signed by President Lyndon Baines Johnson and ensured voting rights for all to include people of color. This group focuses on ensuring that you are educated and motivated to know that your vote counts so that you can share this fact with others. 
It is your civic and moral duty to vote in any and all elections that have a direct impact on your well-being. This group partners with the DC Board of Elections and the Center for Common Ground. Uh, they will do critical grassroots work like volunteering to send out postcards, text messages, make phone calls, and other important work to ensure that everybody knows that their voice and their vote count. Hey folks, all groups that we offer and information on how you can join are in your catalog in constant contact or on realm hey check it out for yourself and make an investment in a small group today Now is a time where you can do your part in building your church and Christ's kingdom. Join us in giving via text to give, Giveify, Realm, or Classic Mail, so that our church can continue to make a difference in the lives of our ever-growing community. East Friendship is intentional about stewarding our resources and raising up a generation of people who want to touch the heart of God through their giving. Let us now pray and ask God's blessings over these tithes and offerings. Father, we thank you for blessing and keeping our church during this pandemic. We ask that you touch the lives of every giver, every home, and every family. There are those who don't have to give or are unemployed. We ask that you open new opportunities for them. Multiply and increase these gifts that we may do your work in the community and in the world. In Jesus' name, amen. Now let us continue to worship. And right now, you can invite others to join us by clicking share right at the bottom of your screen. Help us spread the good news that God is still speaking and doing miracles around the world and right here at East Friendship. Hallelujah. Just come on and lift your hands and just say, Lord, I'm free. Every chain is broken. Every curse is broken in the mighty name of Jesus. Hallelujah. We lift that up right now. Come on. Just let that be in the atmosphere right now in your homes. Come on. Every curse, just say every curse is lifted and every chain is broken in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. We thank you, Lord, again. Every curse is lifted, every chain is broken now. Oh God, every curse is lifted, every chain is broken now.
We greet you in the name that is above every name, a name whereby every knee will bow and every tongue confess. That name is Jesus Christ. This is the day that the Lord has made and we are determined to rejoice and be glad in it. On this Youth Sunday, we want to remind you to continue to sow into the WG Scholarship Ministry, providing scholarships for our youth to assist them with uh, going to college and for different things they need. We want to invite you to continue to support them by direct offerings when you give every month. We thank God for our praise team and music ministry this morning. Our young people are, are hitting it out the park for ministering to our souls. Uh, the Thornton family sends their love and deep appreciation to the East Friendship family for the outpouring of support as they celebrate the life of our beloved sister, Nancy Thornton, uh, this past Thursday. She will be laid to rest in North Carolina. Again, let us keep all of our families in prayer. Today, we are going to continue our Black History uh, Month sermon series called Blackout, because we know our culture is out everywhere from TikTok to sport venues to cryptocurrency, you name it. And they embrace our culture, but often they don't embrace our personhood and dignity. And at this time, let us open our Bibles back to one of the five books of the Pentateuch written by the hand of Moses. That is the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 6, verse 6 through 12. Again, that is Deuteronomy, chapter 6, verse 6 through 12. Let us each honor God's word by standing wherever you are at this time. Please stand, beloved, and honor God's word. My Bible is a King James Bible, and it reads as follows. And these words, which I command thee this day, shall be in thy heart, and thou shalt teach them diligently unto thy children, and shall talk of them when thou sittest in thy house, and when thou walkest by the way, and when thou liest down, and when thou risest up. And thou shalt bind them for a sign upon thy hand, and they shall be as frontless between thy eyes. And thou shalt write them upon the post of thy house, and on thy gates. And it shall be when the Lord thy God shall have brought thee into the land, which he swear unto thy fathers, to Abraham, to Isaac, and to Jacob, to give thee great and goodly cities which thou buildest not, and houses full of all good things which thou fillest not, and wells digged which thou diggest not, and vineyards and olive trees which thou plantest not. When thou shalt have eaten and be full, then beware lest thou forget the Lord, which brought thee forth out of the land of Egypt from the house of bondage. This is the word of God for the people of God. Blessed be the name of our God. Let us pray. Father, thank you for your goodness and your faithfulness to all of us. We invite you to use my mind, my mouth, my meditations to impart your word on this day. Destroy all the works of the enemy within our people and in the world and glorify yourself in everything we say and do. That the words of my mouth and the meditations of my heart be found acceptable in your sight. Oh Lord, you are my strength, you are my redeemer, you are the love of my life, and let the people of God say amen. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. This morning, I wanted to preach from this subject, Black Family, Black Youth, colon, fight for our families and our future. Turn to your neighbor or say to yourself, uh, turn up the fight for our families and our future. Pray with me and stay with me. In this final book of the five books of the Pentateuch, penned on parchment by the hand of Moses, it opens to remind us that the people of Israel are at Kadesh Barnea in the 40th year after their deliverance from Egypt. And their leader Moses is about to expound God's law and prepare the new generation to enter Canaan. Although Moses himself would enter the land, he would explain to the people what they had to do to conquer the enemy, to claim their promise, their inheritance, and live successfully in the new home to the glory of God. God was giving his people a second chance, and Moses didn't want the new generation to fail as their fathers had failed before them. Israel should have entered 38 years before, but in their unbelief, they rebelled against God. The Lord condemned them to wander in the wilderness until the older generation had died, except for Joshua and Caleb's. That's Numbers 13 and chapter 14 as well. 
Philosopher George Santana wrote, those who cannot remember the past are condemned to repeat it. So the first thing Moses did in his farewell discourse was to review Israel past and remind the new generation who they were and how they got where they were in Deuteronomy chapters one through five. Knowing their past, the new generation in Israel could avoid repeating the sins of their father. A grasp for history is important to every generation because it gives a sense of identity. If you know who you are and where you came from, you will have an easier time discovering what you should be doing. A generation without an identity is like a person without a birth certificate, a name or address or family. If we don't know our historic roots, we become like tumbleweeds that are blowing here and there and never arriving at our destination. Therefore, Moses in the text reviews the law originally given at Sinai and applies it to Israel's life in the new land and of Canaan. Deuteronomy means second law or repetition of the law to ensure the next generation or the generation next has the historic grounding in the word and the history of the people. There is a different type of fight for our people here in America and around the world. And this new and next generation that the elders and parents must prepare our children and children's children for. We must keep God central in their hearts using new tools and methods, but the same biblical truths. We must get back to talking and storytelling with our children and turn off some of the devices. They need to hear the voice of the elders and parents that are being drowned out with an overdose of cell phones, social media, and entertainment. We need to give them their history, not only our history in slavery in America and our fight against Jim and Jane Crow, white supremacy and injustice, and our fight for our civil rights, personhood and dignity, and to make America live up to its creed, but we must also tell our story story of our African people and our roots with prolific clarity. Two weeks ago, I posted on Facebook page, my Facebook page, a picture of a door decorated in an elementary school that had a very truthful and powerful statement on it. It said this, they didn't steal slaves. They stole scientists, doctors, architects, teachers, entrepreneurs, astronomers, fathers, mothers, sons, daughters, etc., and made them slaves. Sincerely, your ancestors. We must pass the true and accurate history to our children that impacts how they see themselves, their identity, their self-esteem, and their value. The text today highlights the need to pass on to our children the centrality of God in their lives and to imprint or impress it upon their hearts in such a way that it is embodied and represented in everything they do and see on a daily basis. Do I have a witness? This commitment to the family is necessary to preserve our faith, our people, and our culture. We need to step up our game and take several critical actions all in our homes. Number one, spend more time in the presence of God with our children. Number two, spend less time fighting each other and prepare for our enemy. And number three, spend and invest in relevant tools for the time that engage our youth. Now, let me get these points again so that you can write them down correctly. This commitment to the family is necessary to persevere or to preserve our faith, our people, and our culture. We need to step up our game and take several critical actions in all of our homes. Number one, spend more time in the presence of God with our children. Two, spend less time fighting each other and prepare for our enemy. And three, finally, spend and invest in relevant tools for the time that engage our use. Spend more time in the presence of God with our children. When you look at the text, Moses was a wise teacher of God's truth. First, he reviewed what the Lord had done for Israel in Deuteronomy chapter one through four and reminded the people of God's mercy and God's goodness. Then he reaffirmed the basic principles of God's law in chapter five and six, what we know as the 10 commandments. In chapter six, as well as seven, Moses discussed motives for obedience and explained why the people should honor God's law. He wanted the nation's obedience to be based on spiritual principles, not just personal opinions, and to be encouraged by the right motives. 
Our children today and youth today are being oversaturated by misinformation and everyone's opinion on television, social media, like TikTok, Instagram, and many others. But they're getting very little truth from God and God's word. And if we're going to be able to preserve, prepare, and empower this generation, this next generation, and secure our future as African people in the world, we must center them in God, in his presence, and in his word. There's no substitute for this. Are y'all hearing me? We must do it or set up our families and children for failure and bondage. The church and the black church in particular has been losing the younger generation due to a failure to meet them where they are and to engage them utilizing new tools and methodologies. The pandemic has created greater separation and isolation. This generation will grow up without knowing God and without the spiritual disciplines to enter God's presence and to abide there. And if you understand today's text correctly, you would know that God gave his law to build the people individually as well as the nation collectively. It was to help two million, some say six million people to live together and work together, let alone fight the enemy together. Israel's civic peace and general welfare depended on the people respecting the law and obeying it. But unfortunately, over the years, some of the religious leaders added so many traditions to God's law that the people felt like they were wearing a galling yoke. See Acts 15, 10, Galatians 5 and 1. Moses knew there was always a danger that the new generation would become proud and think that God blessed them because they were better than the previous generations. But Moses reminded them that all their blessings came from the Lord. You hear me, young people? All their blessings came from the Lord in verse three because of his covenant with their fathers, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. He will mention this over and over throughout the text. Our ancestors who wept and prayed and prayed and wept for blessing upon the future generations have allowed us to rise out of the ashes of chattel slavery and to prosper despite the challenges of this racist society dripping with hate and white supremacy. Moses brings them through covenant, confession, and commandment, then arrived in verse six through nine, uh, where there's communication he talks about. When we hear the word of God and receive it in our hearts, then the Holy Spirit can use the truth to transform us from within. God writes the words upon our hearts and we become living epistles that others may read and our lives can influence them to trust God. How we live is important because it backs up what we say. We must make time to spend more time in the presence of God with our children. Secondly, spend less time fighting each other and prepare for our enemy. Most people find it easier to handle adversity than prosperity because adversity usually drives us closer to God and we seek his wisdom and his help. When things go well, we're prone to relax our spiritual disciplines take our blessings for granted and forget to praise God from, all, from whom all blessings flow. The material things we wait for and sacrifice for seem to mean more to us than the gifts that fall in our laps without our help, the blessings. Israel would receive houses they did not build, vineyards they did not plant, wells and olive groves they did not dig, and so much more. The more stuff they got, the more they forgot God and had reasons they had to fight each other. They were fighting over things. And too often we spend more time fighting each other uh, than fighting the enemy. And our enemies are trying to hold on to power. They are concocting stuff in their laboratory, laboratories, peddling stuff on the streets to weaken us, to control us and just kill us. But they also hear Maya Angelou's words, just like moons and suns with the certainty of tides, just like hope springing high, still I rise. And that's a call to greatness and are threatened by our progress and our persistence. Let us arm our children with the truth of God word and who God is. Tell them we were in the beginning in the hand of God in Eden because God created Adam from African soil and made Eve from the African rib and that Africa is the cradle of humanity. Tell them it was God that ignited African minds with science, mathematics and philosophy before there was even an America. 
and design pyramids and ships and weapons, smelting of minerals, agribusiness and methods and models they have never seen before and hundreds uses of minerals that built great cities and inventions. And they still trying to figure out how we did all of that. Tell them it was God who used um, African spiritual leaders like Tertullian, Augustine, Oregon of Alexandria, Pertua, Felicity, Athasinus, and Clement to put the foundation of Christian thought in Western Christianity in place before it spread to Europe and beyond. Tell our children, our young people, it was God that persevered uh, and preserved our ancestors like the Hebrews in a strange land and gave us a new song we could sing despite the ugly and sick actions of our oppressors in chattel slavery. Tell them it was God that used our creative minds to make inventions that would shape America's industrial revolution. Educate ourselves through universities built by our nickels and dimes and built America's economic engine on the back of our ancestors with blood, sweat and tears and free labor. Tell them, tell our young people, tell them don't believe the lie. We never been lazy. We took care and raised their children. Children, we worked sun up and sun down under a whip, raped and dehumanizing conditions while they reap the rewards and sat in the big house doing nothing. Tell them the truth. Tell them it was God that broke the back of slavery, kept us from seeking revenge and payback, guided us to build our own communities with banks and theaters and schools and hospitals and clinics and universities and stores and everything needed despite segregations and racist policies designed to hurt us and keep and hinder us from progress. Tell them it was God that let us dominate anything we put our minds, bodies, and souls to and pull us up with us. Our rhythm, sound, moving, intellect, and ingenuity helped shape American culture and help her become a leading world power. Tell our young people, tell them it is God that all new ideas, inventions, creations flow from, and it will be God who will guide us to the land of our ancestors to receive our true inheritance. Can I talk some more? Tell them God has a, a land of promise for African people with more wealth, oil, gold, diamond, rubies, pearls, minerals, rich soil, milk and honey, and beautiful water and weather. Tell them it is our enemy's plan to keep us from fighting, to keep us fighting each other over trivial pursuits and empty promises, fighting over territory that don't belong to us anyway and for dignity we already have. Tell them this is not our land of promise. America is not. When we acquire land and prosper, they get envious and they can't handle it. Don't you remember they burned down Black Wall Street in Tulsa? Burned down and massacred our people in Colfax, Louisiana in 1873, in Wilmington, North Carolina in 1898, in Atlanta, Georgia in 1906, in the Lane, Arkansas in 1919. Do you remember Rosewood, Florida in 1923 and hundreds and others of uh, community churches uh, that people burned down, lynched and killed to benefit whites and to destroy the progress of blacks? We do have a land of milk and honey and we need to claim the inheritance. Tell them like Moses told Israel, don't be lulled to sleep with our enemies' offerings and their pagan gods, sleeping in their beds of comforts and ease and wallowing in false progressiveness and prosperity. Hold fast to our people and don't let the enemy separate us and categorize us or, and dilute us, our strength and our unity. Tell them not to defy God or openly and unbelievably question his ability and go against his authority by what we say and by what we do. You can't have your bodies in the camp of our people and your minds and hearts back in Egypt of the oppressor. Choose this day who you will serve. Oh my God, we have to spend more time in the presence of God with our children. We have to spend less time fighting each other and prepare our enemy, right? And prepare for our enemy, spend and invest in relevant tools for the time that engage our youth. Moses, look at the text, was equipping the new generation to enter in and claim the promised land. And he knew that Canaan would be a place of temptation as well as a place of triumph. When they conquered the nations of Canaan, the Israelites would inherit vast and extensive wealth and would be tempted to forget the Lord who made victories possible. Israel needed to remember that the Lord owned the land and they were merely tenants. 
Their inheritance in the land was God's gift to his people. But if they disobeyed, do you hear me? Disobeyed his covenant, they would forfeit the land and his blessing. God moved them from Egypt, but have to equip them for Canaan. They must leave some practices and habits and proclivities of Egypt behind. That season is over. The Lord is jealous over his people and will not share their love and worship with any false gods. So Moses warned the people not to test the Lord like the older generation and stretch his grace too far. Times are changing. The church and the family system has no choice but to change. But the truth does not change. How we deliver it does for for each generation. You can't give this generation truth on a reel-to-reel or eight-track or vinyl record or cassette tape, nor a CD or iPod. That's we have been trying to do today. We are, we are so far behind, but they are in 3D, 5G, on-demand, meta world, virtual reality, Oculus Quest headsets, and so on. They are tethered to the technology and require a different level of engagement from those who would deliver the precious treasure of the gospel. We can't bring them into the presence of God if we use tools of the past back from Egypt. The new generation has to fight the enemy in new territory, and the enemy has new weapons of warfare. So God is trying to equip the new generation, our youth and children, our children and youth with the capability and capacity to confront the enemy. But we are training them with outdated tools, methods and systems. We must invest in the tools that will help them not just endure the times, but win the war. God has promised to be with his people to help fight the battles. But we must be obedient to his will and to his word and follow his instructions. In order to do this, we must adopt the methodologies with the same powerful message of the gospel of Jesus Christ. It will not look the same and it will not feel the same. But We cannot let the truth be diluted, polluted or convoluted. There is going to be highs and lows, twists and tight turns. But if we train our young people and expose them to the vast amount of tools available for their uses, but must be consecrated and set apart for the advancement of the gospel. Yes, are you hearing me? Because we need new, fresh models and approaches to Sunday school, to small groups, to virtual church, to deliver the message in vehicles of learning that can meet the young and restless where they are. We need Christians to design technology to do some coding for the next generation of the church. We need to invade the culture with the gospel of Jesus Christ and his power. But we need to speak the word in strange places. We got to speak it in uncomfortable places and high and low places, unexpected places in unexpected ways. So don't get weary, beloved. We are entering a harvest time, but a time of great challenge requires great courage and new systems of approach. We will claim our inheritance when we lean on God in his directions. It is he that has the whole world in his hands and it is he that will give us fresh ideas and fresh approaches to the new generation that we may spread the gospel of Jesus Christ around the world. We must stick close to God and don't stop praising his name. I was listening to the singer Jonathan McReynolds the other day, specifically to the official video of the song called Cycle. And he shared a story that intertwined with my own journey, my own journey. He said, when you go to the amusement park like Six Flags and look at roller coasters, there are two types of roller coaster riders. One like me, who is very quiet and probably don't belong on the roller coaster, who's holding tight to the bar real tight, saying nothing. And then there's the roller coaster rider who just throws up their hands, got their hands up in the front car and just scream and shout all the way through the ride. Ah! And the weird part about it is the riders like me who are trying to be cool, holding everything in, including what is in my stomach, is feeling every inch, every drop, of every twist and turn, backwards and forwards. And, and then there's those who have their hands up shouting. It seems that this present season, God has me and you in this whole virtual world and this whole entire world purposely on roller coaster action. There are rises and deep drops and falls and tight jerking turns and twists just to see if you or I would once just forget about ourselves and concentrate on him, on his goodness, on his faithfulness and on his glory and just scream because he is good and his mercy endure forever. Just scream. Yes, in the pandemic, 
A life we're living on a roller coaster. But but when I think about his goodness and all that he's done for me, Jesus, Jesus, that somebody out there holding so tight on your circumstances of life, you're holding tight and you're scared about what God is doing and what's going on in the world. You're anticipating every drop, every turn, every twist, every jerk, every backward and forward movement. I'm here to tell you, you need to ride this life differently. Just put your hands up in the air and wave them like you just don't care and shout victory is in Jesus. Shout hallelujah. Thrive with Christ and know that Christ had the victory. Keep your hands in the air and praise him through the roller coaster. Praise him through the down dips in the valley. Praise him on the up top mountain moves. Praise him with the sharp jerking turns. Uh, but don't hold on tight to this world. Don't hold on to your circumstances and situations. Put your hands up and just shout all the way through the ride. Because God said he'll never leave you or forsake you. Shout on the ups and the downs. Shout every which way it moves because he got your back and he got you in his hands. There's no dip too low that God can't go lower and hold you in the cradle of his hands. And there's no dip too high can prepare you to reach mountaintops. But God wants us to release the, our tight grip on our circumstance, on our fears, on our situations, and begin to praise him through this transformation that the world is going through. We've got to show the new generation how faith operates and how faith looks. And faith does not hold tight onto fear and onto the world. But faith looks to the hills with cometh my strength. My strength comes from Lord and it looks up and it praises God. Even in the midst of turmoil, tribulation and trial and test, I'm going to praise him. And I'm not going to let no devil in hell take the praise out of my mouth. Do I have a witness? And we need to train up the next generation to get the praise out. And to be so bold and so confident and so assured in the Lord because they've been in his presence, spending time with God and they know him intimately and they're not afraid to invest in the next level of tools to be able to do the work of the kingdom. We've got to train a new generation and we can't keep using the old tools of the past, but the ancient and, and uh, word of God, the Bible, is a book that is relevant in 2022 and will never lose its relevancy. We just got to present it on a different platter, a platter that makes it palatable for a new generation so they can digest it and then begin to transform other lives with it. Let's pray. Father, we thank you. Our families, black families, our black children, our black youth, our future, our present, They need us to open our minds. We need to release the gifts that are within them. They got talents and skills. They know the technology. We need to invest in them and help them shape the new methods for sharing the gospel of Jesus Christ, for imparting, for empowering, for transforming, for taking territory. We cannot be afraid of the change, my God. We have to be able to walk with them. We got to be able to back the enemy down because we have the keys to the kingdom. Thank you, God, for those keys. We don't have not done anything that makes us worthy. But Jesus Christ died on the cross called Calvary for all of our sins. It is he, his blood that makes us worthy, worthy. It's his righteousness that makes us worthy. It's his sacrifice that makes us worthy. And so I'm so glad today, God, we're covered by the blood of Jesus. God, just use our minds, use our bodies because they are yours, that we may, Father, advance the kingdom by giving our young people the truth of their history, giving our young people the clarity about their identity, about their people, not just here in America, but in Africa and around the world. If we can secure them in Christ, and in the power of thy identity, and they equip them with the tools they need to be able to navigate the dangerous terrain of the world and to be able to confront the enemy and and advance the kingdom of God without apology. If we can do that, God, 
we know you will get all the honor and all the glory and all the praise. So I pray for parents right now and grandparents, many who say they can't understand these vast changes that are going on, but sometimes we won't understand it all. But we gotta pray and ask God to give us wisdom and to begin to impart the word of God with our young people. Sit them down and pray with them and, and share the gospel with them and tell the stories of our families and our history and give them the true history of our people, not the tainted history from, from the wrong sources. God, I pray for every child, every youth, every teenager, every young adult that's coming up in the midst of these vast changes. Father, I pray for adaptive behavior. I pray for the quick wit mindedness. I pray for the intellectual uh, capacity, Father, to be able to navigate this territory. I pray that we have more tools, more computers, more technology that we can pray that we can provide for the inner cities of the world and really to help our kids to be able to navigate a new economy, a digital economy, that they may thrive and may advance the kingdom of God, that harvest may be gained for the kingdom, souls may be won, and people may be edified. Father, thank you for this day. Thank you for the cross of Jesus Christ. But I also thank you for the crown that is given to every believer who choose to serve him with their whole hearts. Bless us now, God. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. If you heard this word for the first time and you are ready to uh, strengthen our families, and it's not racist to focus on our families, because as the Hebrews and our Jewish brothers focus on their families in the community, that's what makes them strong because they help one another and they understand each other's identity and story. So we're not trying to marginalize all the other people. But we're trying to serve our communities, our families, our children, and teach them our story, our history, as it relates to the context of the whole global world. We're making our children global, but we got to put in them the self-esteem and value and dignity that they so deserve. And they need to know their identity in Jesus Christ and their beautiful African history that will make a difference in their life. So let us join together and do this work. And if you don't know Jesus Christ and the pardon of your sins, if you never surrendered your life to him, today is a great day to do it. But there's no elevation, there's no the depth without Jesus. You need to give him your life. Pray this prayer. Forgive me, Lord, for my sins, for there are many. I'm sorry if I broke your heart so many times. Forgive me for it. Now, God, I invite you, Christ, Jesus Christ, into my heart, into my life, creating me a clean heart, renew a right spirit. I confess with my mouth on this day, the Lord Jesus, and I believe that Jesus died for my sins, every one of them, and rove on the third day with all power in his hands. I believe it, I receive it, I speak right now that I declare I am saved. Oh, beloved, if you made that declaration and you did that prayer, there's a new life waiting for you in the kingdom of God. And he wants to take you into a deeper depth of his understanding and his promise. He has promised to bless you. Houses you've been built, vineyards, to bless you coming and bless you going, bless you in the city and bless you in the field. He wants to bless his people. We have a good and faithful God that wants to be a blessing to your life. So let us know. I prayed that prayer, Pastor Max. I gave my life to Jesus Christ. I'm excited about it. I want to connect with you now. Well, we're going to help you do that. Just put a message on the timeline or put a, send a private message on YouTube or Facebook or write to us at Kingdom Tracks at EFB Church. Dot O-R-G. That's Kingdom Tracks at EFB, that stands for East Friendship Baptist Church, spell the word church out, dot O-R-G. And we're going to hook you up with brothers and sisters that love Jesus, that are seriously connected to him. It will help you connect with the body of Christ and help you connect with small groups and help you to mature and to grow. Teach you how to read the scripture. Teach you how to get into the word of God. Teach you how to live in your faith, not just on Sunday but a lifestyle of faith every day on this earth. And then put together your gifts, your passions, and send you forth to do a great work. That's what we do, help you to know God, find freedom, 
discover your purpose and make a difference. Make a difference in your own life, in the life of your family, make a difference in your community, in your city, your state, your, your nation, and in the world, no matter where you are in the world. So write to us, connect with us again at Kingdom Tracks at efbchurch.org or put a message on the timeline. We want to hear from you and we want to connect with you. We're celebrating Black History Month, but every day is Black History. History being made in our world and in our community. But we also want to celebrate and not forget that Jesus Christ, the King of Kings, is behind all of our history. And his work on the cross made a difference to each one of us. I'm so glad that you took the time to hang out with us. The young people did a great job ministering to us today. Uh, again, don't forget WG Scholarship Ministry. We don't have the change for children happening right now, but you can drop some change off at the children, uh, change for children off at the church, or you can just go right on our technology, all our four ways to give. There's a little block there for scholarship ministry. Hit that as well. We've got helping hands and other things, options for you. But be a blessing because we need to continue to support the church. we got a big mission here. But oftentimes we see people not coming to the building, not bringing their gifts at all. And that's not going to help us in this difficult day, this difficult time. We need every believer of each friendship and those who are extended family and new friends and those who have left and returned to sow into this work so we can reach the world. This is God's way and this is his heart's desire. Thank you again. Let us pray uh, a prayer of dismissal and benediction. Father, we thank you that every good and perfect gift comes from above. We now send your people out to serve, even in a pandemic, with masks on, with social distance, with washing of hands. We go to serve society and to turn the world upside down for your glory. Empower us, God. Give us the resources, the human resources, the financial resources, the geographical resources to connect and to be able to spread the gospel. We go with joy in our heart, with an expectation, and we go knowing that you would never leave us or forsake us. The power of your spirit dwells in us to take territory. This is our mindset. This is our heart. And we go now in Jesus' name and let the redeemed of the Lord say amen. God be with you until we meet again. Don Cornelius did have it right. Love. God is love, peace. Jesus is the Prince of Peace and soul. He wants your soul so he can change your life. Have a wonderful day. Friendship family and friends for joining us today. Did you know that you can worship with us on demand? That means on YouTube and on Facebook. Please remember, our hope and prayers is that you will come to, to know God, find freedom, discover purpose, and to make a difference. Stay connected through our weekly Between Friends newsletter, Realm, and social media. Family, continue to wear your mask, wash your hands, and distance yourself. Have a blessed week.